oh, in my heart, I really want to go, <laughs> but it's a good thing that our hands work. Let's give the Lord, our Father in heaven, an amazing hand. Doesn't he deserve? He is good. And it is so good to be in the house of the Lord. And it is so good to see you. It is so good. Maybe you, if just for, can I have a little bit more light in the house? I just want to see your faces really well. I don't know if you guys can do it up there, but I want to, I want to have a good look at you. And while they're doing it, I'm looking at you on live stream as well, because it, I always see you with the eyes of my heart uh, every time. Every time we were here and when we had all the dolls that uh, Pastor Doug even, we had some furry friends at the front row <laughs> just to give us a feeling of people uh, being here. But real people, isn't it amazing? Isn't it so good to see each other? Like look at each other just one more time. Just, just look in, in the eyes. And we did it at the beginning like this thing. It's so good to be together. So good to be in the house of the Lord. And it's always so important to see the good things, right? I know one of the tricks of the enemy is always to make us see what we lack. But it is always so good to look at what we have, what the Lord has given, given us. As we sang out this morning, Lord, you're so good. That's the best declaration that we can do. Uh, maybe there's people here today for the first time. Uh, we want to connect with you. And um, for some of you that, that want to do it, you can actually go to the embassy .c, the embassychurch.ca forward slash type in connect. And let us know that you're connecting with us if you were here today, also in your life. We want to connect with you because that's our heart. And it is so good to speak with real people again. I thought for a moment, oh, I can ask for some good amens. But for today, no loud amens yet. But maybe once in a while, just a clap or, 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 or some excitement that I know, yes, I've got people affirming what we're talking about. So are you ready for the word? Yes. Are you ready for what God wants to speak to you? Let's open up. Yes. <laughs> You're getting it. You're getting it. Good. Why don't you open up your heart to open up your hands just for a moment? Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're here. You're here in this building because we are here, but you're also with every person watching online. Everybody who receives this word right now, you're here and you're good. You're so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here today to minister to us, to make the word of the Lord alive to us. We open up our hearts. We open up our minds to receive from you. And Heavenly Father, we just want to say it to you. We gave you a hand. But in our heart, we want to say we love you. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. And thank you that we can be part of a heavenly family because you're the father of all fathers. And as we open up the word today, I pray that by your spirit, we will receive a little bit of the mind of our heavenly father, a father's mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Actually, two weeks ago, Pastor Doug spoke. He spoke about uh, our main focus, and that was our... You could say it softly. That was hard, right? Above all, guard your heart. Pay attention to your heart. Um, and today, I kind of want to tag onto it, and it's connected to, to Father's Day, but also just, just to fathers and mothers for all of us. I want to talk about the importance of your mind. Today, I want to give you a piece of my mind. Uh, talk to you about a little bit how I've, I've pondered my mind, how I've worked um, like all over the years of my life on, on having a, a, a healthy mind. I don't have a perfect mind. I don't have perfect thoughts. Actually, a lot of my thoughts are not right. I've learned to not believe everything I think. Amen? That's a good thing. Uh, I've learned to, believe not, uh, to not believe everything I feel. I don't go by, by those things. But I, I do take my mind serious. Um, one of the things that I always want when I preach is to not tell you what to think but to get your thinking going so that event, eventually your mind will be aligned with the mind of Christ. Because that's, actually that's what God is after. God, Christ wants your mind to be aligned with Him. And um, actually uh, on Father's Day, just for a few minutes, I pondered this one. I so vividly remember when, when my wife was pregnant of our first kid. Now we have four kids, two boys and two, two girls. Uh, and all like boy, girl, boy, girl. That's how we did it. I don't know how we did it, but that's how it happened. <laughs> and and, and I, I, I love my kids. And I remember when um, I knew that Petra, my wife, was pregnant. And I couldn't tell anyone yet. But I do remember that we had a prayer meeting. And in that prayer meeting, like I was excited. Like, like I, I wanted to shout it out. It's, it's like a little bit today. We want to shout hallelujah, but we can't yet. But there's that excitement in our heart. That's what I felt. But I also noticed that as I started thinking, man, 
I'm, 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 gonna, be, I'm gonna be your father. How do you do that? How, how do you raise kids? How do you get them to, to, to love Christ? How do you help them set them up for success? How do you, as a person, how do I set an example for my, how do you do that? And I actually noticed that as I started thinking, in my thinking, something changed. I, 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 like, I could see that in my mind, I had another jump of maturity. And I actually started to look at the Father's mind. Because as soon as you get a Father's mind, and also the mind of our Heavenly Father, as soon as you have a mind of, hey, now I have kids to take care of, you start thinking differently. You, you start not only thinking about yourself and how to survive and how to live and how to have a good life and how to be successful and, and, and all of those things, but you start thinking about others, these little ones that you care for. So you have to develop your mind to another level. And that actually got me thinking about the Father's mind. When I talk about the Father's mind, I'm talking about the F, that's a capital F, our Heavenly Father's mind. And then I actually love how Jesus, all the time when He came, He said, I'm here to reveal the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and I don't, I don't do anything until I've seen the Father do it. I have loved some of the messages that also Pastor Doug gave in the last while about the family of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, the feminine expression of God, the Father and the Son, the family of God. But the Father's mind, the mind of the Father, is a mind that is not thinking about Himself, but about you, it's a mature mind. It's a mind that is focused. And God wants you, and this is for both men and women, to have a father's mind. You don't need children to have this. As I talk about this today, I'm actually talking about a mature mind, about a mind that is under control, not controlled, but you rule over your mind. And it's actually a thing that you have to learn to rule over your mind. Your mind is an interesting thing. And I love the connection about the heart that you have to guard, but also your mind that you have to guard. And today, as we dive in a little bit deeper, I will actually compare your mind to a garden that you need to garden, that you need to tent, that you need to guard. How do you do that? So in order to go through a few things that can actually help you, uh, I'm going to first read a couple of scriptures. There's, there's lots of scriptures today because the Bible actually has a lot to say about the mind. So I'm going to first just take a few scriptures and I'm going to say a few things. And then we're going to really focus in and, and to, to learn today how to have that mature mind, how to rule over your mind. And if there's any time that we need that, it's, it's the times that we're living in right now. There's so much going on. Like we all know, we all feel a service like today is good. It's so good to see each other. But there's also challenges. Our, our, our surroundings, our environment is, is going through all kinds of, it's all, all upside down and all of these things. And to walk through that, it is actually important that you have a healthy mind, that you have a mature mind. So what does the Bible have to say about that? Are you ready? Good. <laughs> yes, of course. I shouldn't, I shouldn't challenge you to, to shout and all of those things. <laughs> so I'm going to go through a few, a few scriptures. I like Job 32, 17. I'm going to read that one in a, in a second. This is actually Elihu, and I love Elihu. I've, I've done a sermon here, I think, a while back about Jesus and Job. And, and Elihu comes alongside Job after he had three friends saying all kinds of things. Actually, Elihu spoke his mind to Job in such a way that that's actually the big turning point where Job got the revelation of how things really worked. And, and it's, 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 if you want to watch that message, Google it, go online, go on YouTube, and go on the website. You will find it. It's called Jesus and Job. There's a beautiful context here. But the sentence here is so simple. When he starts talking, he says this. No, I will say my peace. I, that's Elihu, will speak my mind. You can actually speak your mind. Actually, constantly when you speak, or even right now, I'm speaking my mind. I'm speaking what's going on in my mind. Your mind and your speech are connected. How you talk is a reflection of how your mind is. So if you tend your mind, if you take care of your mind, it will actually be reflected in how you speak. How someone speaks shows me how his or her mind is, how it works. If you want to change your speech, if you want to change the way you talk, you have to change the way you think. 
And Elihu here had beautiful words to say because his mind was aligned with God. Psalm 7, 9 says this. David is praying and he's asking God, end the evil of those who are wicked and defend the righteous for you look deep within the mind and heart, O righteous God. So it's both and. God looks at your heart that we talked about two weeks ago, but God also looks at your mind. He knows your mind. He watches your mind. He actually cares for your mind. God looks within your mind. The next one is so beautiful. Psalm 94, 18, it actually shows this one. I love this one. This is so helpful for you. This could be an encouragement, a sermon in itself. Again, I'm still setting you up just to have a little bit of an idea of how the Bible talks about your mind. But this is a prayer. I cried out, I'm slipping. But your unfailing love, O Lord, supported me. God supports your mind. Keep reading. When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. When doubts filled my mind, so that happens apparently. Doubts can sometimes fill your mind. But when that happens and you cry out to God, God is there to give you comfort and His comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. God supports your mind. God wants to help you in your mind. We'll go deeper on that a little later. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says this. I already said this earlier. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things because we have the mind of Christ. We can actually have the mind of Christ. And here are a few things that I want to focus into, and then later on we'll go deeper on these. But you, you can actually have this. You're, I'll, call it, I'll, I'll say it how the Word says it. Your mind can actually be warped. Let's read it. Proverbs 12, 8 says this. A sensible person wins admiration, but a warped mind is despised. So there's things that can go on in your mind that is out of order. That is, according to the Word here, is, is warped. It's, it's not aligned. It's not the way God wants it to be. But God looks at your mind, God is after your mind, God supports your mind, God wants to give you the mind of Christ, so God wants to give you a healthy mind, so God wants your mind not warped, but right. So how does that work? We'll get there. Two more scriptures. Proverbs 16, 30, sorry, Proverbs 16, 23 says this, from a wise man mind comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. So again, the way you speak is connected to your mind. And if your mind is wise, that will actually be reflected in your speech. So your mind can be warped, but your mind can also be wise. Who, and don't say yes, but maybe do a, do a high five in the air. Who wants a wise mind? Yeah, that's what we want. I want a wise man, mind. And there's another thing you can actually Worship with your mind. I thought it was so interesting this morning, especially at the beginning when Pastor Doug said, I, I've been jokingly like, I've had a message a while back about worship without the veil, and now we have worship with the veil. We have to wear these masks, and now we have to sing with the inside voice, and that's tricky. And it's especially tricky if you limit worship to singing. If you limit worship to only an outward expression. But worship is so much broader than that. Again, if you catch that your words are the overflow of what's going on in your mind, if you learn to worship with your mind, then your words will reflect that, and you will actually worship the Lord even if there's no keyboard or no drums or no whatever, because your mind is the overflow of worship in your mind. Amen? High five again. <laughs> and that's what God wants. Let's read this one. Matthew 22, verse 37. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all, there you have it again, with all your heart, watch your heart, tent your heart. Two weeks ago we talked about that. All your soul, but also with all of your mind. So you can love the Lord with your mind. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. So your mind can be warped, your mind can be wise, and your mind can actually be a place of worship. I want my mind to be, be a place of worship. And that makes me actually, a 20, if I get there, makes me a 24-7 worshiper. Not only when I sing a song, but when I talk, when I respond to my kids, when I respond to my wife, when I respond to my peers, when I deal with COVID-19. If my mind is aligned with the mind of Christ and a place of worship, then how I speak and how I act is a reflection of this place of worship. Are you with me? So you give me a soft yes. Yes. <laughs> so good to be together with people again and still so good to be with so many people online. I, just before I started speaking, I saw there's so many people watching. That is so, so good. So let's make it a little bit more practical. How do you tend, how do you guard your mind? We're called to guard our hearts, but we're also called to guard our mind. Or in other words, how do you garden your mind? How do you tend the garden of your mind? The first thing I want to say is this, and you're going to actually going to see it on the screen. You've seen this online in the last three months. Wasn't it cool to have a TV screen like this? Like, I kind of loved it, and it was so fun to do things like that. But the first point you're actually going to see on here is this. Be aware of the war. Be aware of war. There is a war going on in and for your mind. If you really paid attention to all that I've said so far, you can actually see how powerful the mind is and how that is connected with your words. And the enemy wants influence. The enemy wants influence in this world. And the enemy knows if he can warp your mind, if he can move your mind away from being a place of worship, but if he can warp it so that wisdom will depart and then he can control you, he will control your actions, he will control your mouth, he will control your speech. So there's a war for your mind. There's a war going on to influence your mind. I, I, I love, and you've heard me say this before, and I think recently even Pastor, Pastor Doug referenced this in, in, in one of his messages, but if you go to Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8, it is so beautiful to see what happens there. In Romans chapter 8, you see Paul talking about, this is who I am as a human being, and I'm wrestling with this. And then in Romans chapter 8, it starts with, in Christ there is no condemnation, and then by the power of your of Holy Spirit, they can actually cry out, hey, Abba, Father, I'm a son of God. So it's again even connected to the mind of the Father. So Romans 7 and Romans 8 show something very beautiful about a war that's going on, and then also the solution. So let's read a couple of verses from Romans chapter 7. This is how Paul is describing this thing. He's saying, I'm try I want to do the right thing, but I don't. There's a war going on. Romans 7.23 says it like this. There is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. So we're not fully with Christ yet, and that sinful nature is still there. And because of that sin sinful nature, the enemy knows that and uses that sinful nature to fight within you, and it's a fight with your mind. There's another power within me that is at war with my mind. A couple of verses later, Romans 7, 25 says this, but thank God the answer, this is what I always love, I always preach Jesus at the center, the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is. Here, watch these words. In my mind, I want to obey God's law. I want to do what's right. But because of my sinful nature, I'm also a slave of sin. So you have to be aware, if you want to tend the garden of your mind, that there is a war going on for your mind and in your mind. And Romans chapter 8, of course, says this so beautifully. And later on, we'll go, go also to that place of how can your mind be that place of worship. But Romans 8, 6 says this. So when you let your sinful nature control your mind, it leads to death. Letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Peace. Watch the word that is in there twice. Letting. God has given you a free choice. 
and it's going on in your mind. Your mind is actually very powerful, and you actually have a lot of control over your mind. And in your mind, there is a, there is a war for control. And with your mind, you can choose who's going to control your mind. That's how it is. So in your mind, there is this war going on. And what I love about this verse, it also talks about the solution that Holy Spirit wants to help, but it also shows what's really going on. You can basically choose. In your mind, you can choose, okay, I'm going to let sinful nature control what I do and what I think. That's what it starts. Starts with your thoughts. Or I can let Holy Spirit control my mind, control my thinking. There's a war going on, and in your mind, you can actually choose who's going to be in control. So how do you do that, even practical? So this is going on. There's a war. There's a war going on for your mind. So if that is taking place, if that sinful nature is constantly trying to derail you, how, how do you do that? The second one I find very, very practical. It's really worked for myself, and I call it this. Ignore the weeds. Ignore the weeds. And if you're thinking, what are you talking about? I'll explain. Because I've, I've already said, your mind is like a garden. And in a garden, things can grow. In a garden, actually, you can create paths. Wherever you walk, that's where stuff won't grow. Where you don't walk, that's where stuff will grow. And the best way to describe this is, is by reading this parable. And if you're with me still, let's read it together in Matthew chapter 13. And Jesus told this parable, parable, and it has also another meaning that Jesus is talking about. But for today, I'm actually focusing and using this parable to say something about your mind or what's going on in your mind, how this war is actually working in your mind. So if you read this parable, read it with the eyes of, okay, this is about my mind. Verse 24, Matthew chapter 13. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven, and today I'm saying your mind, <laughs> is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted Weeds, and that word for weeds, it's a type of seed, a darnel seed, and that darnel seed looks almost exactly like weed. It's like weed and weed. In English, it even looks alike. And for a non-born Canadian person like I am, it's actually tricky to say right between weed and wheat. You know what I'm saying? The one is W-H-E-A-T, and the other one is W-E-E-D. It's, it, it looks alike. It almost sounds alike, but it's totally different. That's what the enemy there did. Sowing stuff that almost looked like something good, but it, it wasn't quite good. It looks good, but it isn't. And he, he sowed that seed, weed, darnel seed, amongst the weed. Let's keep reading. And then the enemy slipped away. So it's a, it's a drop. It's a thought. That's what the enemy does. He just drops something there. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. And the farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull out the weeds? They asked. No, he replied. You'll uproot, you'll uproot the wheat if you do so. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvester to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, burn them, and to put the weed in the barn. What I've learned in this one, if you apply this one to your mind, I've had times in my life that I overly focused on constantly trying to weed out the weeds. And by focusing on that too much, I actually discovered that I worshipped not God, but I worshipped the enemy. I worship what the enemy was constantly trying to do in my, my mind. I call them, like we, we talked about warp, warp minds, and you can have what I call crooked thoughts. That's why it is so important for me that I do not believe everything I think. I've said it before. I don't believe everything I think. I don't believe everything I feel. And because of that, I am aware that sometimes my thought, my, my mind has thoughts that are just, just plain stupid. Or some of these thoughts are just not in alignment with the, with the word of the Lord. And they come in. They are 
crooked thoughts. They're not the right thoughts. They're not Christ-like thoughts. But they come in. They're, they're thrown in. If I overly focus on them, like, oh, it's a wrong thought. How do I keep that thought out? How do I take care of it? And, and, and I'm not saying that when you need to uh, repent of things, of course you need to repent of, of if your mind is, is out, of, out of touch. You go to the Lord and you say, Lord, forgive me. But I'm talking about if stuff like that is constantly in your mind and you overly focus on it, you're actually doing exactly what the enemy wants. You're focusing on the negative. You're focusing on the wrong things. And if I take this one, just let them grow. Let them, let them be there, but in your own mind. I, that's why another way of explaining is, is, is choose your paths. I've discovered that if I walk in my mind certain paths, and they are not the right paths, but I keep walking them, it's familiar. But then if I learn, okay, I'm going to tread new paths, I'm going to ignore those, but I'm going to tread the paths of the Lord, focus on the good things, focus on, and we'll, we'll end, end on this one today. I'll make it very practical on how you can focus on the good seed and how you can focus on the right paths in your mind. And it's, it's a focus on the right thing and ignoring the wrong thing. Basically, it's saying this, in any garden, you will have weed seed, bad seed. It's just there. In your mind, it's not always perfect. Your mind is not always correct. Your mind is sometimes crooked. Your thoughts are sometimes wrong, and sometimes your thoughts are sinful. Sometimes these thoughts come in by watching certain movies, and certain movies can give you good seed, beautiful things, and other movies can, and it's something very small. You know, all these movies make it so normal right now to have a do adultery and all these things. It's the most normal thing, and it's all these seeds. If you allow these seeds to go in, they come in, but if you make them grow, then things go wrong. What you watch is, it's a bit of a sidetrack, but it's connected. The enemy is constantly sowing seeds, and you can't prevent. If you keep yourself opening yourself up to all those things, and it comes into your mind, and you're focusing on it, then choose to watch different movies. Choose to do different things. But at the same time, you can't prevent that, that bad thoughts. And I'm not always, like, like right, right away people think about sexual thoughts, and that's part of it. But it's even the way... We talk. It's, it's the way we respond to things. It's, it's just all those things that are not in alignment with the Word of God. And constantly we hear these thoughts being preached to us, and they come into your mind. The biggest thing is just accept that that's a fact. It's just true. These thoughts come into your mind. Don't pay too much attention to it. So that's how we come to the last point. How do you make your mind that place of worship? How do you do that? So you're aware of the war. We're ignoring the weeds. And now we want to make our mind a place of worship. We'll go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I love this one. And it is so practical. I'm going to end with a few practical things just right in this scripture. If you want to, if you want to grow in this one, I would encourage you, find a printer, find a pen, find a piece of paper, or however you do it, but print this verse. Print it big. Hang it on your fridge, wherever you want to do it. If you want to change your mind, this is your verse. Philippians chapter 6, sorry, chapter 4, starting in verse 6. And some of these things are so easily said and so hard done. But Paul is saying this with boldness. He's saying, if you want the, right, the mind of Christ, this is how you do it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for all He has done. Did you hear, even in the service, how we said we want to focus on what we have? Today's service is not like we had, but we had an amazing service today. God moves and God is here. We have both and God is moving here. God is moving at people's homes. God is moving and we're focusing on what we have and we're thanking God for it. And if you do that, you will actually experience God's peace. And God's peace exceeds anything we can understand. His peace, and here you have it, will guard your hearts 
and your minds as you live in Christ. So there is a peace of God that actually wants to guard your hearts and guard your minds. So verse 8, verse 8 makes it really specific. So if you want to do this, if you want to live this way, if you want your mind to be aligned with heaven, do this. One final thing, fix your thoughts so you can focus your thoughts. There's distractions, there's war, there's weed, but you can fix your thought on certain, certain things. You can focus on these things. Fix your thoughts, and here's eight things that he lists on what is true, and I'll, I'll read them, and then I'll mention a few things about them, and then we'll wrap up, and we'll have you home, or if you're already home, we'll let you enjoy the rest of your day. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. It's all there. And I like verse 9. Keep putting into practice. That's all capital letters for me. If I would print this verse, I would capital letters that word practice. You need to practice this thing. You need to train your mind. Just like these awesome muscles that I have, I also have to train my mind. This is a big muscle. And you can train it by focusing, doing it. Practice it. So I want to highlight these eight and then we're done. And don't worry, I'm not going to go really deep on all of these eight. But focus, fix your thoughts on what is true, what is truthful. Jesus is the truth. It's the word of the Lord. Focus your mind on those things. Focus your mind on the truth. Fix your mind on what's honorable. I wrote down this. When somebody's honorable, when somebody's a person of honor, Another word is if, 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 if somebody is a person of dignity, it is someone who shows fine personal qualities or high moral principles and ideas. So you can fix your mind on high moral principles and godly ideas. If you, mind, if you want your mind to be a place of worship, have your mind, fix your thing, mind on those things, the things that are good, that are honorable, the third thing is fix your thought on what is right. Others' translations say on what is just, on what is righteous. We, we fix on truth and justice and righteousness. On the things, this is how I worded it here, a focus on the things that are in line with the principles of God, with the commandments of the Lord. Sometimes we are so afraid about the law of the Lord and the Ten Commandments that we come, get, get stuck into condemnation. But God has given us those things so that we can think about those things and focus our mind on the things that are good. That's how your mind becomes a place of worship. The fourth thing is, think about which is pure. And another word for that is with what is innocent, what is clean, what is mod modest. Don't... Don't pollute your mind with filthy stuff, but think about what is pure, what is good. Make sure that you focus on that. And if filthy thoughts come by or if they're sown, ignore them, look away, and right away, fix your thoughts on what is pure, on what is true, on what is holy. The fifth one, on the things that are lovely. Another word for that is that is pleasing, that is fun. That is positive. Pastor Doug and I, we have that climate, that, that, that culture between the two of us, but also in the church, we believe that whatever the circumstances, a good joke is always good. If we have very serious conversations after about 20 minutes, we say, well, I think it's time for a joke now. And we'll just have fun. And that's actually biblical to fix your mind on positive things, on what is lovely. That it's the things, and I like the word here, and, and again, I, I want to focus and round off too, but it is profile. And you, you know that that's connected to profile. And when we have a profile on Facebook or whatever, we want to show what is good about us. Well, instead of focusing too much on your profile on Facebook, on how you look towards others, why don't you focus on your profile in your mind and think about your profile of what is lovely, what is good, of who you want to be, how you want to be, and how you want to act. Make a beautiful profile in your mind. And think about those things. How do I want to be? How do I want to be loved by others? And ponder those things in your mind. The sixth one is admirable. 
And you can see that as well spoken of. Reputable. Rep, this is a difficult one. Reputable. Am I saying it right? That what makes you, that what you love about others. The former one is what you love about yourself. This one is what you love about others. If I want to, with you, of course, I couldn't. But with certain people, I could see all kinds of negative stuff. I could think, I could think, focus my mind on all kinds of things that they should improve, that they should change. I don't want to waste my mind space on that, though. I don't want to make waste like those weeds can come by, but I want to focus my mind on thinking positive, thinking positive about others. Even if others make mistakes, I still want to see what's good. Hello? That's how you tend the garden of your mind. By doing that, you're not only helping them, but you're actually helping yourself. You can waste so much time in bad thinking about, about others and what they do, should have done and all of those things. Don't do it. Don't do it. Have a pr good profile for yourself and also for others. Number seven, think about what is excellent. And again, that's similar to, to pure, about what is morally excellent, what is good. Think about those things that are worthy of praise, praiseworthy, positive, commendable, and practice these things. So what would it look like if you start doing this? For you, it's very simple today. If you want the mind of a father, if you want the father's mind, be aware that there's a war going on in your mind. It's true. In you, sinful nature in combination with the enemy wants to make your mind go all over the place and wants to make your mind warped, not wise. Just admit that. If you start there, that's, that's a good starting point. There's a war going on for my mind. But then you're going to focus on, okay, I'm going to ignore the weeds and I'm going to make my mind a place of worship. I'm going to think about what's good. I'm going to focus on all these things that I've just listed. That's why I would say, if you want this, print this and then practice it. By doing so, you're actually worshiping God. And even if you have this little mask and there is no word coming out of your mouth, with the song that we might be singing, your mind could be worshiping the Lord by focusing on these things. Let's stand together for just a moment. Those are the amens. <laughs> if you want to, just open up your hearts, open up your mind, or, and your, your hands, and open up your mind. I'm going to pray a very short, simple prayer, and then Pastor Doug... Is going to come back here and give us a few uh, directives on how we're going to lead. But today on Father's Day, I just want to bless your mind. Holy Spirit, you're here, Heavenly Father, by Holy Spirit. You're actually here to release the mind of Christ. And thank you that when we come to you for help, you search our mind and you're here to help our minds. Lord, we're all aware that our minds can be a place of war. But today, we decide that we want our minds to be a place of worship. We will ignore the weeds and we will focus on what's true, what's right, what's admirable, what is lovely. Cleanse our minds even right now. If it was filled with filthy stuff, crooked thoughts in any area, negative about others, judgmental, negative about yourself even, in Jesus' name, I just want to speak alignment, heavenly alignment over our minds, over the minds of people listening by live stream. In Jesus' name, let our minds be aligned with Christ. Let the war, even if it takes place, diminish. Let the paths of our minds grow as we focus of you, on you. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen. Man, why don't we give the Lord one more hand? Isn't God good? You may be seated for one more moment. We're going to give you instructions again. If you've given your life to, if you want to give your life to Christ, you can do that even right now. If you're on live stream or even if you're here, you can take your app or whatever you do and actually connect uh, by going to the website, theembassychurch.ca forward slash. And, and I think it is, help me, I think they're showing it even online, but it's, it's either connect or it is salvation. But if you want to connect with us, do so, so we can pray with you and you can choose to live your life with Christ. Why don't we welcome Pastor Doug? He's already behind me. 
I got a double blessing uh, listening to Pastor Leon this morning. I was watching him live streaming <laughs> as well as just uh, looking beyond my screen and enjoying him live. So double blessing. Great word. Great word. 